In this video, we are going to talk about a chi-square hypothesis test. When two variables are statistically dependent, the independent variable does have predictive power over the dependent variable. That means those two variables are somehow connected or somehow related. If they are not related, then one variable is not going to impact the other variable or the dependent variable is not going to impact the independent variable. So when we take a look at this um, flowchart, um, we know that if um, the level of measurement of a dependent variable is a categorical variable, and the level of measurement of independent variable is a categorical, categorical variable as well, then we are going to use a chi-square to run the hypothesis test to see if the independent variable may have a significant impact on the dependent variable. Let's go through some examples. The first example, the compared to males, are females more in favor of death penalty? Here, the independent variable will be attitude toward the death penalty, um, in favor or not in favor, like or dislike. The independent variable will be the gender um, coded as male and female. So here you can see um, the dependent variable is a nominal variable like dislike. The independent variable is also a nominal variable or we say categorical variable male or female. Right? So the proper test to run a statistical test for this research question is to use chi-square. Um, here is the table or here is a cross tab. We mentioned the cross tab in the previous PowerPoints, right? So here is a cross tab about um, a survey that we get um, from um, 1,824 people. Okay, now first of all, let's read this uh, table first. So there are 609 female like death penalty or in favor of death penalty. 385 females are not in favor of death penalty. Regarding males, 574 in favor are in favor of the death penalty. 256 are not in favor of the death penalty. In terms of the column marginal, um, you can see the column marginal is just simply add the two together and you will get this number similar for the dislike and for the row marginal similarly you add the number in the row and you will get this number you add those two things in the row you get this number right so the column marginal actually give you the information like in this sample 1824 how many people like or are in favor of death penalty we have 1183, right? Uh, similar, like uh, how many people are not in favor of death penalty? We have 641. The row marginal tells us similar information, but regarding the gender. So how many females are in this sample? 994. How many males are in this sample? 830. Okay, easy to read this cross tab. So, like I mentioned in the previous PowerPoint, is that traditionally we use the five steps to run the hypothesis test for those simple hypothesis tests. Chi-square is one of them. We will also use the five steps to run t-test, ANOVA, and the correlation. Okay. Let's go through the step one. Is um, step one is the noun and alternative hypothesis. Step two is a distribution degree freedom. Step three is to use whatever the information in the step two to find the critical value. Step four is to use a statistical methods or mathema mathematical methods to calculate the obtained value. And step five is to make a decision whether we accept the non hypothesis or we reject the non hypothesis based on the value of critical value and based on the value of obtained value. Let's go through each of them. So the non hypothesis in the chi-square test is that there is no relationship between dependent variable and independent variable. In our case, the gender and 
the in favor of death penalty, whether in favor of this death, death penalty, they are not related. Okay, the chi square test is chi square. Oh, this is look like an x, but it's a chi, so it's chi square, right? If the chi square equals to zero, the variables are unrelated. So I we use this uh, formula to suggest the non hypothesis in the chi square test, which is a chi square equals to zero. Okay. Um, alternatively, is that there is a relationship and there is a significant relationship between gender and their attitude towards death penalty. So the chi-square work gets larger as the overlap relationship between the two variables increases. So the alternative hypothesis in the chi-square test H1 is going to be written as the chi-square larger than zero. Okay, it's not chi-square not unequal to zero or chi-square smaller than zero. It is chi-square is larger than zero. So put in this uh, context compared to males are females more in favor of death penalty. Okay, the now hypothesis will be there is no statistically significant difference between men and the women regarding their attitude toward the death penalty. So here between men and the woman, uh, that's the gender, right? This is the independent variable. Attitude toward the death penalty, that's a dependent variable. There is no significant relationship between the dependent variable and the independent variable. The alternative hypothesis H1 will be there is a significantly relationship between uh, gender and the attitude toward the death penalty. It's pretty simple. Okay. Once more, we emphasize here and in the previous PowerPoints is that we only run our test um, to see if we accept or not accept the non hypothesis. Okay, we don't run any tests on the alternative hypothesis because if you make a decision in the non hypothesis, you are going to automatically make a decision for the alternative hypothesis. Okay. Step two is the distribution and the degree of freedom. The chi-square has its own distribution. Uh, I mentioned this one in the previous PowerPoints, right? Um, the chi-square distribution is from the left at zero, and there are no negative value in the distribution. It's very makes sense because if you can see the chi-square and it has a square, and as you know, any number. If you square any number, any number will be a positive number or zero. There is no negative number if you square something, some numbers, right? So the chi-square, there is no negative value in the chi-square, okay? So um, the chi-square, just like the T-curve or the T-distribution, is a family of different shaped curves. So it has a bunch of different look like a uh, look chi-squares. Um, um, but when the de uh, it really depends on what the degree of freedom is. When the degree of freedom increases, the chi-square distribution become more and more normal. You will see a thing like this. So the chi-square, when the degree of free freedom of five, the chi-square look like a very positively skewed, right? When the degree of freedom of ten equals to ten, you can see it still look like a positive skewed, but less skewed. When the degree of freedom equals to 15, it looks like a more normal. Okay, so you can imagine like when it's going to be like 20, it looks like, 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 like this maybe. Okay, but just like the T distribution, it's a family of, of curves. It really depends on the degree of freedom. This also tells us that when we're going to use the, the chi-square to find out our critical value chi-square, um, then the degree of freedom plays an important role inside of it, right? So here is a typically the graph that we use or I use for the chi-square distribution starting from zero, a little bit more than higher than zero, no negative numbers and going to peak one and has a long tail in the positive side. The, in the second step, we have identified the distribution, which is a chi-square distribution, and we have to compute the degree of freedom. The degree of freedom in the chi-square, uh, based on the formula, is the number of rows minus one multiplied by number of columns minus one. Okay, 
the number of the rows must be excludes the marginal and the number of columns must exclude the marginal as well. And remember, this is not the, the degree of freedom in chi-square is not based on the sample size. In the past, we say degree of freedom sometimes is really largely based on the sample size. But in the chi-square, it's not really based on the sample size. It's really based on the cross table. It's really based on how many values you have in the dependent variable and the independent variable. So as here, you can see for the independent variable gender, we have two values, either male or the female male, female, female, male. And for the um, dependent variable, the attitude toward the death penalty, we also have two values, either like or dislike. So it's quite simple. The degree of freedom equals to two minus one, the independent variables um, minus one, and the dependent, the, how many values in the dependent variable minus one. So two minus one multiplied by two minus one, which equals to one. Now we are going to use this information, the distribution and degree of freedom to find the critical value. Okay, um, the value of the chi-square critical, um, really it is, it is decided based on the alpha level and the degree of freedom. Now here is some examples. The, if the alpha level is 0.05, degree of freedom equals to two, the critical value will be 5.991. If the alpha level 0.01, degree of freedom equals to two, the critical value will be 9.210. If the alpha equals to 0.05, degree of freedom equals to one, the critical value will be 3.841. If the alpha equals to one, I'm sorry, 0.01 degree of freedom is one, then the critical value will be 6.635. This is example, and in the following some couple of slides, um, I will show you how to find this. So this is like um, the degree of freedom um, and also the relationship between um, the degree of freedom and the alpha level in the chi-square. Okay, so it will just look like that, and it, it automatically highlights the degree of freedom or I'm sorry, it highlights the alpha level at 0.05, okay? So let's see if the alpha level at 0.05, degree of freedom of two, what are you, what's the number you're looking at? So first identify the alpha level 0.05, then identify the degree of freedom of two, and you get this number 5.991, okay? And remember like in this example, because the chi-square distribution has no zero numbers and it it is, uh, one tailed test. So here, uh, unlike in the previously when we talk about confident intervals that you should have a positive number and negative number in the confident intervals, in chi-square tests, there is only one side, there is only positive side. So you only have one chi-square critical value, okay? And which is a positive number. So if the alpha level 0.01, degree of freedom of two, so you can see alpha level 0.01 is here, degree of freedom of two is here. Now you have the number, which is 9.210. Similarly, if you have alpha level at 0.05, degree of freedom equals to one, you look at the 0.05 and the one, you get this critical value 3.841, okay? Um, again, you have the alpha level equals to 0.01, degree of freedom is one, then you have this 6.635. Okay, it's quite simple to read the whole table, just like uh, how you're gonna read the um, the T table in the previous PowerPoints. Okay, alpha level 0.05, let's have a bigger degree of freedom, then you will see 0.05, degree of freedom of 20, then you have 31.410. That's the bigger one. But typically, the in most of the cases, you will see the um, the alpha level sometimes most of the time will be 0.05 and the degree of freedom sometimes it will be just one or two. Okay, it's very small. So in this example, let's say we use the alpha level at 0.05, degree of freedom equals to one, we have this calculated in our step two, right? So what do you have is the critical value is a 3.841. Now in this, in this, um, graph, I highlight it. this is supposed to be where the critical value is and anything that above or over the critical value, this side, 
is going to be uh, what we call the rejection of hypothesis, non hypothesis area. So if the critical of 10, uh, I'm sorry, if the chi square of 10 is here, we are going to reject the non hypothesis. But if the chi square of 10, whatever we can compute, is somewhere here, okay, then we are going to uh, fail to reject the non hypothesis. We have to accept the non hypothesis. Okay, so let's say we put, uh, uh, we just put the critical um, chi square not value here, 3.841, is some, some, somewhere here, I don't know, it might be, okay. So anyone, any number that is bigger than this number is going to lead to us to reject the null hypothesis. Any number that is less than this number is going to lead us to accept the null hypothesis. Now the step four is to compute the obtained value that we're going to use in compel ring to this critical value. Okay, in the chi-square, we actually have two frequencies. One is called observed frequency, the empirical results in a uh, cross tab from the sample data, or symbolized as the FO, the F of observed, frequency of observed. We also have the expected frequency, which is the one that you have to be, you have to calculate um, for each of the cell in the table. Um, and the expected frequency basically means that if those two variables are not related, what is the frequency supposed to be? Okay, if they are not related, what is the frequency supposed to be? The observed frequency is, okay, I have this data, what's inside the data, okay? So for the expected frequency, uh, as a symbolized as the F expected. Um, so the features of the chi-square test, just um, very um, briefly talk about is, are the observed frequencies significantly different from the expected frequency, right? As we mentioned ab about uh, before, the expected frequency is the one that if there is no relationship between dependent variable and the independent variable. If the observed frequency is similar to the expected frequency, that tells us that uh, dependent variable and independent variable are not significantly related, right? Uh, logically speaking, um, and if the observed frequency is very different from the expected frequency, then we say those two variables are somehow kind of related, okay? So the thing we are needed to do is to first calculate the uh, expected frequency. The expected frequency, you have to calculate the expect, ex, expected frequency for each cell. Uh, I will show you later um, what does this mean. But it really uses the, uh, the row marginal of the cell multiplied by the column marginal of the cell divided by the total sample size. It's not hard, it's very easy. It's a row marginal multiplied by column marginal divided by total sample size. What does this mean? I go you give you some examples. Okay. So let's say let's name those cells as A, B, C, D. Again, cell A just basically means there are uh, 609 females who are not in favor of the death penalty. Okay. So for to calculate the cell A, um, this this number what you have seen here is what we call the um, observe the value. It's actually in the data, right? We are going to calculate the expected value that if gender and attitude toward the death penalty has no relationship, what the frequency should look like, okay? Uh, you have to calculate for each of the cell, A, B, C, and D. There are four cells. So for the cell A, you will see that we use um, um, the row marginal 994, okay? multiplied by the column marginal 1183 divided by the total sample size. Okay, remember that's the row marginal for this cell and the column marginal for this cell. Okay, so you can just mimic the same thing uh, as the cell B as well. Cell B, what's the row marginal of cell B? 994, right? What's the column marginal of cell B? 641. So 994 multiplied by 641 divided by the total sample size, which is 1,824, okay? You do the same, 
so um, we are just going to do uh, one more. So the cell C, uh, the row marginal for the cell C is 830 multiplied by the column marginal for the cell C is 1183 divided by the total sample size, which is 1824. Then you get this number. Um, and also similar for the cell D. You have to calculate the expected frequency for each of the cell. Okay, so let's um, let's just uh, briefly talk about uh, one more time. What does this mean? So for the cell A, the expected value is 645. 645. Okay, this means if gender and attitude toward the death penalty are not significantly related then the cell A is supposed to have 645 people in the cell A. Okay, if they are not related, it's supposed to have 645 people in the cell A. What do we have here is we have 609 people in this cell A. There is a difference between this observed value and expected value or observed frequency and expected frequency okay there is a difference the the hypothesis test we do is to see if the difference is a significant difference right in the stats we all, always say there is always a difference but whether those difference um, is significant or not it really depends right so again similarly if there is no difference or if there is no significant relationship between the gender and attitude toward the death penalty, the frequency in cell B, which is here, should be 349. So there are, are there should be 349 people in the cell B. Now we have what? 385 people in the cell B, right? There is a difference between um, what we expected and we, what we actually observed. However, is this uh, difference a really significant difference, right? That's the thing we are going to answer, okay? To, uh, so once you understand this one, the obtained um, chi-square value is going to be the each of the difference and you square it divided by the expected uh, frequency and you add all um, this part in each cell together, which is the sigma. That means you sum everything together, right? So you will get it. So as you can see that we have this for the cell A, this for the cell B, this is for the cell C, this is for the cell D. And after we add all the things together, we get a 12.33 for the obtained chi-square value. Um, there is another way to better organize the table. I used to ask people or students to calculate those chi-square by hand, and this is a worksheet uh, I used to give them, okay? So you just put everything inside this sheet and it will be easy to calculate uh, and it will be very organized um, and you will see sometimes if you uh, made a mistake, you will easily find out. So you put every obtained frequency inside of this and you put every expected frequency in, um, in the, those cells which is based on the calculation right and then you use obtained frequency minus the expected frequency you get those things and then you use um, sort of uh, obtained frequency minus the ex expected frequency and take a uh, take a scroll and then th those numbers are um, keep got like divided by the expected frequency of each cell which is here like right so you will get those numbers here and then you add those numbers together then you will have the chi-square obtained value okay then that's a that's a that's a very kind of a, an easy way and a more organized way to do that So then we're going to make a decision based on the chi-square obtained and the chi-square critical, right? Um, when the noun is rejected, we are going to accept the alternative. 
when the uh, noun is accepted, we are going to reject the, alter, uh, the alternative hypothesis. Okay, but how do we make a decision? If the value of the chi-square obtained is larger than the chi-square uh, critical, we are going to reject the noun. If it's less than the chi-square critical, we are going to accept um, the noun. So it's very simple. We uh, we did this one in like a step three, right? So in step three, we already mark this chi-square critical at 3.84 somewhere here, and we mentioned that anything um, on the right side is a rejection of non-hypothesis area. So if the number is larger than this number, like here, maybe 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, then we are going to reject the non-hypothesis. If the number, um, the chi-square obtained is less than this number, like 2, 1, 0.5, something like that, then we fail to reject the non-hypothesis, we have to accept the non-hypothesis. So what we have is 12.33 somehow, right? So 12.33 is some, somewhere here in the rejection area. So what is our decision? Since 12.33 is larger than the 3.841, so obtain the chi-square value is larger than the critical chi-square value. Therefore, we have a good reason to reach the non-hypothesis and go in, we have to accept the alternative hypothesis. What is the alternative hypothesis? It says there is a significant difference uh, between men and the female male and the female in their attitude toward the death penalty. And also you can take a look at the percentage is that female has 61.2 in favor of the death penalty, um, when the male has 69.2% uh, um, in favor of the death penalty. So our conclusion, a further sentence is based on the percentage, female are significantly less supportive of the death penalty as compared to males. Okay. Now, if, let's say if you have the results that you have to accept the non-hypothesis, which basically means like there is no significant difference, then this sentence is not necessary because if there is no difference, then the further analysis about which one is larger, which one is smaller is meaningless, right? If there is no difference. But in this example, there is a significant difference. Therefore, we have additional sentence based on the percentage to see what um, what's the difference is or what is the conclusion is. Okay. Um, one thing we wanted to emphasize is that in the conclusion, there is no causality. There is no cause and effect assertion. Okay. So we, we can say that we only say that females seem to seems to be less supportive of death penalty compared to the males. We can't say that if you are the female, then you are not going to support death penalty. Okay, there is no cause and effect in the gender and in favor of the death penalty. There is only a um, like a relationship between them. Okay, a relationship is not a cause and effect relationship. There are different kinds of a relationship. So in, in chi-square, we don't have a cause and effect assertion in our conclusion. Okay, we can just simply say there is a difference and there is a significant relationship between those two variables. We can't say who leads to or who result, which one result in which one, okay? So let's go over this another example real quick because we spent the time in talking about the previous and in a very detailed way. So the second example, we are just going to um, go through a little bit faster um, because everything else is the same. Okay. In, so the second one is the question or research question is, is there a statistical difference between people who have different educational level and their attitude toward, toward the death penalty? Okay, so what do you have here in the cross tab? You see we have the educational level as our independent variable. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, favor or oppose death penalty as our dependent variable, right? So dependent variable is categorical variable, favor, oppose. Independent variable is a categorical variable with three groups, high school or less, some kind of college and a bachelor's degree or higher. Okay, so 
categorical variable, independent variable, um, categorical variable, dependent variable. Okay, so we are going to use the chi square, right? Quite easy. Um, the first is a non and alternative hypothesis. It will be the same. Okay, the non hypothesis is chi square equals to zero. So there is no uh, significant difference between the people who have different educational level and their attitude toward the death penalty. And the alternative hypothesis will be chi square is larger than zero. So there is a difference between people who have different educational level and their attitudes toward the death penalty, right? Second, when we take a look at the distribution and degree of freedom, distribution is so easy because we're using the chi-square. We have to use the chi-square, so it's a chi-square distribution. The degree of freedom is how many categorized in the independent variable, three, right? How many categorized in the dependent variable, two, okay? So the degree of freedom will be three minus one multiplied by two minus one equals two, two. Uh, so let's say we use the alpha level at 0.01. So we have 99% confidence that our result is good or is sort of correct. Uh, we may have 1% chance that made, made some bad decisions. Okay, 99% chance we are going to make a good decision. So alpha level 0.01 degree freedom equals two. You will see from the previous um, slides that the critical chi-square value will be 9.210. Okay, you can double check this one with your own chi-square table. So again, we mark our chi-square critical value as here, somewhere here, and anything that is larger than this number, like 10, 12, 14, 18, is lead, going to lead us to um, reject the non-hypothesis. Anything, anything that is less than or any obtained chi-square value is less than this number 9.210, like 2468 is going to lead us to fail to reject the null hypothesis. That means we have to accept the null hypothesis. Once again, we have to compute the obtained value. Of the, so the very important thing is, is that we are going to get the um, expected frequency for each cell, just like showing here. Okay, so I, I'm just gonna uh, again make two examples so you know and um, get some um, enhancement. Okay, so for the cell A, um, the expected frequency will be the row marginal 530 multiplied by the quarter marginal 574 divided by the total sample size, as we suggest here. And for the column, not column, I'm sorry, cell B. That's a 530 multiplied by 256, again, divided by 830. So you do this one for each of the cell. You can actually pause the video and do, do the calculation by yourself just as a practice. Okay. Um, since you already have the uh, expected frequency, what we're going to do is that we are going to put everything inside of our working sheet if you calculate by hand. Okay, the, obtain, uh, the ob observed frequency is the raw data that you have. Okay, the expected frequency is something you got from um, the calculation in the previous slide. And then you use obtained to minus the expected frequency. You square it and you also you divide it by the expected frequency of each cell. Okay, then you, then you have this things and you add everything together, then you will have your obtained chi-square value, which is 4.50. Now we're going to make a decision based on this 4.50 obtained chi-square value, right? What is our um, um, critical chi-square value? It's 9.210, somewhere here, right? Rejection of the non-hypothesis area will be listed as here. Okay, so where is this 4.50? Oh, it's right here, somewhere here. Okay, so what do we see? It's in the non-rejection area, right? What, what What's the conclusion if it's in the non-rejection area or the obtained chi-square value is in the non-obtained area, a non-rejection area? That means we have to accept the, um, the non-conclusion 
non-hypothesis. Okay, so the, our conclusion is 4.50 is less than 9.2 to 10. The chi-square obtained is less than the chi-square critical. Therefore, we have to accept the non-hypothesis and we don't do anything about the alternative hypothesis since we already accept the non-hypothesis. Okay, so conclusion is very simple. There is no significant difference between the people who have different educational levels and their attitude toward the death penalty. From this data, we see that uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that people has a higher education may uh, be more likely to oppose the death penalty. Actually, people have the uh, somehow the college, college um, the college education or even high school education or even higher or lower has nothing to do with their attitude, attitude toward the death penalty. Okay, remember we use the alpha level at point one to um, conduct our hypothesis analysis here. What if we use a point five? So the only thing will be changing is that the critical value will be a little bit different, right? So if you go back to the previous slide or use your own chi-square table, you will see that if the alpha level is 0.05, degree freedom is 2, then you get your critical chi-square value as 5.991. Now we make a, another decision based on this alpha level at 0.05. Okay, so again, 5.991 is here and anything that is large or in those areas will be our rejection area. Anything that is less than this area or less than this number going to this, this area will be um, the non-rejection area, right? So still we have the same obtained value. Obtained value is not going to change. As you can see here, obtained value is still less than um, the critical value. So our conclusion is similar. 4.50 is less than 5.991. So the chi-square obtained is still less than the chi-square critical. Therefore, we have to accept the non-hypothesis. Okay. Therefore, um, there is no statistically difference between the people who have different educational levels and their attitude toward the death penalty. So whether you use the alpha level at 0.01 or you use the alpha level at 0.05, your conclusion is, uh, your conclusions are the same. Okay, the conclusion is we are going to accept the non-hypothesis and there is no relationship between people's education and their attitude toward the death penalty. That's it for the chi-square.